Hello, my friends, and welcome to Fishery. I'm Alexander Williamson, and we are going to continue last week's video where we talked about using three different sources of water to jumpstart or cycle your aquarium. Now, I took these three samples, one from a lake, one from my tubs that have uh, daphnia and seed shrimp and scuds, various food sources in them for my fish, and one from a five-year-old tank that's well-seasoned. They've all been sealed and sitting for a week now. So a total of eight days since I last opened them for the microscope. And a very strange thing has happened. And I want to talk about some of the strange things that maybe need their own video to talk about, but also the fact that the lake bottle turned totally blue. It's like a bluish gray murky color in the water like almost lilac it's very bizarre now the bottle has some blue writing on it as do these bottles but yeah we'll take a close look and I'm gonna show you what's going on because it's rather bizarre all right so we're outside it's early in the morning I like getting up nice and early 4 a.m. so it's crisp and cool out and the reason I wanted to show you guys the bottles at this time is because they've been sitting in the carport which is not exposed to direct sunlight it gets ambient light and there's a floodlight here uh, that clicks on but for the most part these have not been in the direct sun but they have gotten enough light to know whether it's day or night as far as the organisms go now, in our ponds, there was only probably two or three types of algae that we found present in the one-year-old tub, pond, whatever you want to call it, uh, that was from my backyard, which is just a bucket of water, essentially, that we filled with uh, leaves and some stones at the bottom, a couple sticks, and then let rainwater fill it up. And anything that moved in... Well, it moved in, and that's where I got anything in this from. I have other ponds where I have uh, inoculated them with, you know, just daphnia or just seed shrimp or scuds. But this one is one of the ones that's one year old and just has whatever it has in it. Now, if you want to see the video where I looked under a microscope at all this, that is up. And I think it's a rather fascinating video. But here, what we're seeing is that the algae in this bottle is still growing and still happy. It's filamentous algae, and you can see it kind of has a swirl like a tornado, and that actually changes throughout the day and night. At night, it expands out, click back on, Aziz light, and in the day, it actually gets tighter, denser, which is really interesting. I would have assumed maybe the opposite would happen, you know, that the organism would try to expand and get the most light possible. But maybe in the day, there's so much light that it doesn't need to do that. And so it, it does the exact opposite. But I find it interesting. And also it shows you what happens when one type of algae can take over. We also know that the aquarium uh, samples, that had algae in it too, but it's actually died rather than uh, then bloomed and it's completely gone now and even the detritus is really really diminished in a week so we can see there's a little bit of skeletonized uh, algae in there and some mulm but really the scuds and the seed shrimp and the daphnia all of them must have really done a number on it the other thing you can see is if we hold this up there's now debris in the tank water this wasn't the case earlier and I looked with a microscope and also zoomed in with the camera lens carefully and looked for quite some time. And most of these are actually the exoskeletons of the little critters that are hiding and zooming around the bottom of the tank. So what's interesting is this sample has actually gotten cleaner even without oxygen. Now it does have some plants in it in that it, it has floating uh, plants that were part of the sample, some duckweed, but I think that's producing enough oxygen or maintaining enough oxygen that it's working out. Uh, in this one, the algae is probably producing oxygen and then putting off CO2 at night. But the other thing that's happened is a lot of little insects and critters uh, that are flying have hatched and are on the sides here, snails too, uh, and mosquitoes and things have hatched, flown, and then grown tired, and they're floating on the top there. Now, the lake sample, it has everything 
in it. It has a lot of creepy crawlies and a lot of debris. Some of the worms and snails and, you know, like planaria and stuff is actually dead. And I don't know if it got poisoned by uh, the toxicity of the cyanobacteria in here. But you can also see there's a little insect right there. You see its wings. It's moving along and it has hatched. So there's definitely going to be uh, life that is living in here still. And it's interesting what survived. Like, there might be a lesson in what stops planaria in here. And I'd like to get to the bottom of that. Now, the snails have all crawled out. So they must not like the toxins in the water. This sample looked to the eye very similar to this sample in that it was just a wash of green when we took the sample. Uh, there was a lot of green to it. Well, all of that has kind of deteriorated and turned into this bluish lilac haze. Very strange. And the cells, you can see, there is still some algae in it, but it's not flourishing. It's being poisoned, essentially, by the cyanobacteria, I believe. And the cyanobacteria that was all throughout the water column has died. So it, it either didn't have access to light or nutrients or the oxygen exchange wasn't rich enough. I don't know for sure, but I find it fascinating. Also, the water has cleared up up high. There's a little bit of debris. But for the most part, this used to be where all the life was, was trying to get to the oxygen at the surface, and there's still a little scud in there and uh, a worm or two. But everything else is down at the bottom now. And uh, it, it really is a large difference of what's going on. You know, in the bottle, I wasn't sure if everybody would have problems due to a lack of oxygen or if there would be uh, enough oxygen being produced and or maintained, like in a cycle, that the algae would take care of that. And in the tub sample, that seems to be the case. And in our sample here with the duckweed, that seems to be the case. And the way I am, the reason I'm saying that is because from past experiments, I know that scuds will not live more than five or six days uh, in a bottle, even if you leave a lot of room for oxygen. They need uh, quite a bit of oxygen and they go to the top to breathe that oxygen. That's what these guys are doing here. Uh, so there is enough of it being maintained and the other thing that's fascinating about the aquarium sample is that you know a lot of times fish eat these kinds of things so we just don't see them however in this sample we're starting to see that the life forms are getting bigger the little critters on the side of the bottle are actually getting larger and the eggs and things that we saw on some of the little life forms like the uh, cyclops and stuff They've actually hatched, and their exoskeletons from their first two or three sheds are kind of debris floating in the water. So, you know, it really does show you that the diversity, the fact that we saw, you know, 10 types of algae, but very, very sparse, like a little piece here, and then not in a slide, and then a little piece there. It shows you that no one algae was taking over that sample. And I find that really interesting. Now, they all had no nitrates uh, other than the, the lake water had 20 parts per million when I got it. Uh, and you would have thought that the cyanobacteria and algae that was, you know, all over this sample may have, you know, uh, metabolized that and grown with it. But that's not the case. Uh, it still tested at 20 parts per million. Uh, just recently, which is also interesting to me because the other two are testing at zero still, which makes sense. But uh, in, in the case of the tank water, to me, the fact that it's getting clearer and that the amount of debris, like the mulm, has actually been processed down and turned into little creatures that are swimming around, like looks like a bunch of sea monkeys in there. That's amazing to me because then your fish would eat them, go to the bathroom, they'd produce a fine debris, uh, snails would break that down, and then bacteria and other small microorganisms would break that down again. So it really goes to show you uh, that the bacteria and the algae and the fungi, whatever it may be, uh, living in this uh, well-seasoned tank is uh, very, very beneficial. You know, that it's doing its job just like advertised just like we are taught 
how tanks cycle. It's really quite incredible what seasoned water does that's healthy. Now, I think that it may not be right to call either one of these unhealthy in that this water is still actually fine for fish and healthy. And it just has uh, algae rather than cyanobacteria. And it's not so much algae that's free single cell floating that's choking out the sun by any means. And actually duckweed is still growing in it. And all the little creatures are still swimming around doing their thing uh, down here. There may be a little development of blue-green algae, but I think it's just denser algae, period, uh, at the bottom there. Um, but I'm going to look under the microscope, and if that's inaccurate, I will edit this. Uh, and down here, we've just got what looks like sludge. I mean, just all that organic matter in the leaves and stuff is already breaking down as well. So there was a complex ecosystem breaking it down. But now it looks like uh, the worms and the planaria are all dead. I mean, even if we like dare to shake it up, it's it's a very, very uh, dead looking sample. You know, there there's uh, still some scuds swimming around somewhat. So there must be oxygen enough for them, but clearly the, the cyanotoxins or something about the lake water became completely stagnant and uh, fouled, uh, and it's, uh, the remnants are cells floating in the water of the cyanobacteria, so they're just dead cells. If you look under the microscope, the cloudiness is going to be bacteria, algae, and cyanobacteria cells that are just dead floating, and uh, they must be refracting light at that color, which is really interesting because most lakes don't turn a lilac to blue color, uh, or gray for that matter even. I don't know. I'd love to hear what you guys think and uh, just wanted to bring you guys these updates. Also, I want to do a time lapse soon of algae samples like this, the filamentous algae, in bottles because that whole expanding with the daylight and then contracting and forming different swirling structures is absolutely fascinating to me. So uh, let me know if you guys want to see what that would look like and uh, if that seems like a worthwhile thing or if I should just keep that to myself. As always, thank you for joining me. And I will see you guys next time. I can't do this channel without you. And I appreciate your views, your likes, your appreciation, your love and support oh so very much. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.